Good morning and welcome to today's episode of uh, Word Bites. <laughs> uh, a bit earlier than usual, but um, yeah, so here we go. Today we're going to look at Hebrews chapter 6, verses 1 to 12. Hebrews 6, 1 to 12. What an amazing time we've had studying this book. I mean, that I've had. <laughs> and I believe you've had it as well. And you will continue to have it until it finishes. You can tell it's one of my favorite books in the Bible. Simply because it really lays out um, foundational truths. It helps us to be able to understand um, what it means to be a child of God. What's available to us. What's happened to bring us to this level. And as we carry on today, we'll see greater detail into these foundational things, which is very important because the foundation of any building determines the stability of that building. Okay, so here we go. We're going to read Hebrews 6, 1 to 12. If you get your Bible out and uh, if you're using your app, make sure your phone is on silent. Here we go. Therefore, let us move beyond the elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from acts that lead to death, and of faith in God, instruction about cleansing rites, the laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And God permitting it, we will do so. It is impossible for those who have been, who have once been enlightened who have tasted the heavenly gift, who have shared in the Holy Spirit, who have tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the coming age, and who have fallen away to be brought back to repentance. To their loss, they are crucifying the Son of God all over again and subjecting him to, to public disgrace. Land that drinks and the rain often falling on it, and that produces a crop useful to those for whom it is farmed, receives the blessing of God. But land that produces thorns and thistles is worthless and is in danger of being cursed. In the end, it will be burned. Even though we speak like this, dear friends, we are convinced of better things in your case, the things that have to do with salvation. God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you have shown him as you have helped his people and continue to help them. We want each of you to show this same diligence to the very end so that what you hope for may be fully realized. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Really profound. So generally speaking, uh, just to give a general um, uh, synopsis of the, part, the portion of the Bible we just read. So it talks about going on to maturity. You know, we finished off yesterday talking about some people that um, because they do not want to learn anymore, they do not want to uh, receive or understand the basic teachings of God, you know, uh, they had stunted their own growth spiritually. So instead of going on to maturity, they are stuck on the same level. So now they are needing to be fed with milk again, which is for newly born babies. So they've uh, <laughs> determined that they don't want to press on to maturity. So that was a rebuke to them. Now, because this starts with saying, therefore, so we've just seen what therefore is there for. <laughs> Amen. So now it's, the general synopsis is that, you know, uh, it's encouraging the people to go on to maturity. To go on from being babies, okay, to wrench themselves from the, the grip of carnality <laughs> and then move on to maturity. Amen. But then there's a word of caution there. Okay. It's like get to the point where you're moving on to you know, the top of a mountain and uh, obviously you want to get to the top so that you can stay there and uh, be able to have a clear view and you know enjoy whatever else that brings but there's a word of caution there that they should be careful so that they don't fall off the edge okay we're going to look at that, look at that uh, um, into more greater detail rather but then 
it finishes off with an encouragement for them to stay diligent in helping God's people, thereby showing God love, okay, and also in imitating the, um, those who inherit the promise through faith and patience. Amen. All right, so let's go to verses 1 to 3. So this talks about the foundation principles, okay? Um, they're like, they're referred to as foundation doctrines or doctrines of Christ as well. You know, these are very uh, fundamental, very foundational, very important for anyone that becomes a Christian to be able to understand because understanding brings, you know, a, a revelation of what it is that you're dealing with, okay? And uh, so these, there are six of them here, okay? And it talks about how these are things that a new believer needs to look at, needs to understand, needs to be taught, okay? And uh, just like a new baby needs to be given milk so that it can grow, a new believer, which is a, a new baby spiritually in the Lord, needs to be fed these foundational principles. This is milk of the word of God. Okay. So uh, basically you've got, you know, the doctrine of repentance, the foundational teaching of repentance, which is absolutely vital. Without it, we cannot <laughs> be saved. <laughs> it says repentance from acts that lead to death. Repentance doesn't just mean being sorry. It's being sorry enough to turn away from whatever it is you're sorry for and turn towards God. Amen. So there's, there are two sides to it, to repentance. You're sorry, first of all, and then you change your ways. You re change your mind and you change your ways. Okay. Then faith in God. So repentance and then having faith, putting your trust in God in his provision for your salvation through Christ Jesus. That's important. Without it, you cannot be saved. Salvation is by faith through grace. The grace has been made available. The work has been accomplished on the cross of Calvary. You and I need to um, receive it by faith, through faith in God. Faith simply means that you believe what God said. You were not, we're not there <laughs> when Jesus hung on the tree, but we believe what God has said. And because of that, we are in faith, so we're able to receive and it talks about baptisms, okay? Um, these, I don't have time to go through all this. <laughs> there are three different types. First, the first one happens without you having anything to do with it. You are baptized into the body of Christ when you receive Christ into your heart. It's done by the Holy Spirit. Secondly, there is water baptism, which Jesus commands us to be baptized in water once we give our hearts to him. An outward uh, sign of an inward uh, occurrence, what's happened in your heart. Okay, so as you go into the water, you are identifying with Christ, okay, in his death, burial, and resurrection, okay? And then there's the Holy Spirit baptism, which is when the power of God comes upon you, you're baptized, you're filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? Then we've got uh, laying on of hands. This is a doctrine whereby, you know, through the laying on of hands, we can impart, we can transfer the power of God. The, through the laying on of hand, people can get filled with the Holy Spirit. The power of God can get transferred into them to bring healing. Through the laying on of hands, people are commissioned as well into ministry and so on and so forth. You know, that's a doctrine of Christ. Okay, that's why the Bible says don't lay hands suddenly on anybody <laughs> because there's transference of things that happen <laughs> when you lay hands. So you've got to be careful with laying hands on you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then you've got uh, the doctrine of resurrection of the dead. Okay, how that the dead... You know, this life that we have now is not just the end of it. Uh, when we lay our body down, which is the house that we are living in here, and then we go on to wherever our destination is, whether we've made Christ our Lord, if we made him our Lord, we go on to be the presence of the Lord. If not, we go into absence of God, the place of torment. It's called hell, where there is no hope. God is not there, okay? But there's no need for anyone to go there, okay? Uh, God has made available the path for us to come into his presence eternally. And that path, that way is Jesus. Then you have eternal judgment, okay, which is what happens, you know, at the end of the age to those who rejected God, you know, there is eternal judgment. And as a result of that judgment, there is a, a punishment, you know, eternally. I have a product actually uh, that I've, I've done it's a it's a 
uh, an eight-part um, video presentation. It's called A Strong Foundation. A Strong Foundation is powerful. I went into greater details about these different doctrines. And I think it would help anybody if you're interested, okay? If you contact me, um, contact details are in the bio. Or if you can go on our website, summit-international.org. Okay, avail yourself of that or give it to somebody to help them. Your new convert, a new believer, yourself. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. It's called a strong foundation. That's what the product is. Then verses four to eight, moving on quickly. It talks about how, um, you know, it's like we're told to uh, come to terms with this new, found, new doctrines, be founded know exactly what's going on so that we can grow we can have a solid basis for us to grow amen but then there's a warning here that in your growth in your going on to maturity be careful to make sure that you don't fall off the edge okay because uh, when you get to the top of the mountain if you're not careful because the top of the mountain is always an edge to it all right if it's a plateau the edge you have more space to stand in the middle if it's not you don't have a little space and you've got to be careful that you don't fall down the edge. All right. So he's saying here that some people, having gone on to maturity as Christians, you know, they can get to a point where, you know, they can turn their backs on the Lord and deny Jesus, basically. And he's saying that it is impossible to bring them back to repentance. Remember, repentance is the, is the first step to being saved. Okay. Repentance from acts that lead to death. All right. That's the first step. Uh, step to being saved so he's saying here that um these people they're not just people who give their hearts to the lord yesterday no they are mature people mature christians they've been enlightened they know what it is to be born again to be to be saved they they, they have the light the knowledge they're not ignorant people all right uh, then they've tasted the heavenly gift which is jesus christ they've received him into their hearts they know the goodness of the Lord. They've experienced the goodness of the Lord, right? Then it says, they've shared in the Holy Spirit. They've received the power of the Holy Spirit. They've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, all right? And then it says, they've tasted the goodness of the Word of God. You know, the Holy Spirit, who is the author of the Word of God, has opened their eyes. They've experienced, you know, the, the goodness of the Word of God. They've experienced the Word being fulfilled, being performed in their lives. They've tasted it, you know? undeniably then it says they've tasted the powers of the coming age these are real sons they are powerful okay they have they, they've been able to like the Bible talks about how the whole creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of god these are sons they've come to the point where they have tasted that power of the world to come all right and it says if those people now get to the point where they fall over the edge where they turn their backs and say Oh, they're not they're not serving God anymore or they even go beyond that and begin to attack believers and you know stand opposed to what they were once part of he says that look there's no hope for them <laughs> amen he says and, and the Bible likens them to a land that is you know receiving all the all the blessings the nourishment the rain and so on that it needs to be able to produce good fruit now if that land is not producing uh, thorns and thistles, which is a sign, you know, when the, when the curse was released in, in Genesis, um, the curse upon the land, uh, the result of that was that it was going to produce thorns and thistles for Adam and Eve. All right. So these people are likened to the, that land producing thorns and thistles. And then the result will be that because they are already producing thorns and, and thistles, they were in danger of being cursed. Because they're already producing the fruit of a uh, cursed land. They were in danger of being cursed. The fruit was going to end up, you know, in manifesting that curse in their lives. And then in danger of being burned. And this is really, really sobering. So we've got to be sure, got to be careful that we don't get to the point where we're so familiar with God. So much that we, we, be, we allow the enemy to begin to sow doubt in our minds. You know, we've got to the point where we think, oh, you know. I mean, <laughs> we know all these things, you know. You can see the fruit and the evidence of God's power in my life and so on and so forth. And then, before we know it, we're going off the rails. We're talking, you know, error and doctrines of demons and 
before you know it, they are off, falling off the edge. We've got to be extremely careful. But verses 9 to 12 on a <laughs> more <laughs> positive note, you know, uh, this brings encouragement. It brings encouragement. Here, uh, the writer is saying to them, look, even though what I've said above is, is true, but concerning you guys, <laughs> concerning you guys, I believe that that's, that won't be your portion. All right. That's won't be your portion. And know this, that your work, you know, that you, you do in helping God's people. And by doing that, you're showing love to God. I mean, this is very powerful. Whatever, like Jesus said, whatever you do to any one of these, my brethren, you're doing it unto me. So here he said, the, the, the work, remember we, we, we did in one word bite a, a, a while back, where we talked about our work produced by love. All right, so he's saying here that the work that you're doing in helping God's people, thereby showing love to God. You want to show that you love God? Obedience is one great key <laughs> way of showing that you love him. Secondly, when you're showing love to God's people, you're showing that you love God. Amen. I mean, practical uh, love, demonstrating the love, <laughs> amen, it works. Okay, so you're showing that you love God. He says that, you know, these are the things that he's sure of concerning these people. That one, they continue to show their love for God by helping God's people and encouraging them to continue and not to stop. Then secondly, that they should stay diligent, you know, uh, to the end. They should stay diligent to the end, you know, and not become lazy. Because... Those who become lazy, they cannot get the reward. They must stay diligent to the end. This is the encouragement to them. And it goes on to say that, you know, staying diligent, loving God, loving people, God's people, and then uh, imitating those who through faith and patience inherit the promise. You know, God has promised. When we choose to believe his promise and hold on to that promise, irrespective of what's happening around us, irrespective of our situation and circumstance, irrespective of what anybody else says, we hold on to what God says. That demonstrates faith. All right. Now, the patience aspect of it doesn't mean that you now let go and then, you know, just say, kiss her, her, no, that's not patience. Patience simply means that you remain the same. You are in the same attitude of faith and belief in God. You are confident, you are, you are, you're, you're um, established in the fact that God is faithful. He will fulfill this promise. So through faith and patience, you inherit the promise. So here, this encouragement talks about continuing to love God's people, showing that you love God, remain in faith and in patience, then you will inherit the promise. And that's the title of today's uh, word bite. Love, faith, and patience bring the results. Hallelujah. So that has been uh, word bites for today. I'm sure it's been a blessing. So please like it, share it, um, comment, yeah, yeah. and click the notification button. If you watch it on our YouTube channel, which is Summit Ministries International UK, do the same. Like, share, uh, click subscribe, click the bell button. And don't forget, we have a product talking about the foundation doctrines of Jesus Christ which is a strong foundation. That's what the product is. So if you're interested, if you go to our website, www.summit-international.org, you can avail yourself of that product and bless somebody else with it. Amen. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.